Asli Shukri. I'm a professor of political science in the political science department at MIT. My research began on cause of war. Why do countries go to war? And as I looked more and more into this, technology and technology differentials became important. And now I've moved to the area of uh, cyber politics. What has the internet done to society, to interactions, to countries? Uh, what tools are being developed? Why do some countries uh, people use the internet and others less so. Why is Arabic with such a low presence on the internet and what can be done to, to accelerate it? The rate of growth of Arabic has been enormous but it's still very low. And the connection to, to my earlier research on war is that this, this, the cyberspace, internet, etc. is the only technology that really uh, encourages and puts the spotlight on the individual individual action, individual behavior, individual impacts on politics. Everything else is the government chooses or the corporations act or parliaments decide, but this is a case where the voice of individuals come through. So I'm trying, we're trying to understand um, how internet and international politics are going to intersect with each other. And my last book, my 10th book uh, from the MIT Press is on cyber politics and international relations. I undergraduate, I was at AUC, American University in Cairo, because I didn't get a McMoor to go into Cairo University, so no other way. Yeah? And then I went to uh, Stanford in California to study political science uh, for master's and PhD. And I chose Stanford because I saw an advertisement uh, on the door of AUC. Without, and I realized that uh, most students don't don't know much about American universities or foreign universities, foreign education. Self-confidence, to believe that if they're interested, they have to believe that they can get in. Because MIT is not a philanthropic organization. It, it really focuses on performance competence. And if they bring you in, you're almost guaranteed to get a degree because it will not allow you to get out without, without getting a, a degree. So I think self-confidence is important. Second is willingness to ask questions. If, 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 if you don't understand uh, what's the difference, let's say, between one university and another, try to find out. Um, third, MIT tends to be overwhelming. People are usually afraid of MIT. It's, it's supposed to be only science and engineering, but it isn't. It's architecture, social sciences, first-rate economics, first-rate business. And I also believe that the record we have seen is that the connection between Egyptian students admitted to MIT and the education they get, MIT is, is very, cons works well with Egyptian students and vice versa. I'm a professor of mechanical engineering at MIT, obviously in the Department of Mechanical Engineering. So my research field is a bit diverse, more, more diverse than usual. I work in computations, in energy, and in combustion. So I do a lot of work in development of uh, mathematical algorithms for computational fluid dynamics to be applied uh, in, in a variety of systems, like combustion systems, propulsion systems, energy conversion broadly. I'm also interested in um, energy uh, efficiency and low emission system. <coughs> I'm very interested in low carbon energy, um, uh, uh, um, removal of CO2 from combustion systems for uh, solutions to combat global warming. <coughs> I work extensively in uh, fluid dynamics and thermal science broadly application of these disciplines in energy and combustion uh, applications. Uh, some of this work is uh, again for sort of clean energy, uh, combining uh, renewable energy with fossil energy. <coughs> some of it for development of uh, modern propulsion systems again with a lot higher efficiency and lower emission than what we currently have. <laughs> so although the work is very focused on computational methods, uh, how to develop computational methods uh, uh, for, for, for many applications, most of my applications tend to be in this area. So my background, so I was born and raised in Egypt, 
I went to Cairo University Mechanical Engineering. I received my bachelor's degree and my master's degree from Cairo University. <coughs> I left Egypt to come to the US to do my PhD, and that was in the University of California in Berkeley uh, back in the late 70s, early 80s. I stayed there after uh, my PhD as a postdoctor for a for few years, and, uh, um, and around 83, I moved here to MIT to join the department. Well, first of all, they should apply. If you don't apply, you don't get admitted, right? <clears throat> so those who are interested in research done at MIT in the science and engineering, economics, management, architecture, even some of the important areas in humanities, if they're interested in doing research and getting advanced degrees in these areas, they should apply. They should, they should give it a try. Um, if you are a graduate student, if, you're, if you just finished your bachelor degree and you're interested in doing your graduate studies, <coughs> as, as simple as downloading an application form from the web, looking at what, what we're asking for, fill it, and, and send it in. Don't make any assumptions <coughs> whether you will be admitted or not admitted. Leave that for somebody else to decide. And if you're not admitted, don't take it personal. It, it happens all the time. We get five to ten times more applications than we can admit in any particular year. <coughs> uh, when you get your application, fill it as well as you can. Be very careful, meticulous, and rigorous in filling out your application. That's kind of the first thing I see about you, is how you filled out your application. Uh, typically, we're looking for your grade point average and the school you graduated, uh, the grades in the core courses in your major. Uh, we're looking for uh, your GRE performance. Most, most departments will require the GRE. Definitely an English exam, like a TOEFL exam. <coughs> uh, uh, we're absolutely interested in students who know how to communicate. So communication is, is extremely important. So write your essay and write it as well as you can. And <coughs> don't, don't be timid about your writing your application. Tell us about yourself, why you're interested in this field, what you've done before, what you're going to do with your life afterwards. All of these things factor in the decision making for accepting graduate students. And the recommendation letters are very important. <coughs> um, find people whom you work with, know you well, and you can write good recommendation letters for you. Um, as I said, we get applications from all over the world, every, everywhere. <coughs> um, the, the student body in this place is extremely diverse. Um, personally, I've had close to 100 graduate students and postdoctors over my career. I've had students from Egypt, from Lebanon, from Tunisia, France, England, Greece, Italy, Korea, India, China, South America, Russia, Africa, everywhere. <coughs> there is absolutely no, no, no limit on you know, how we can expand. In fact, we pride ourselves in having a very diverse uh, student body. As I said, it's very important you fill out your application, send it in on time, get your GRE and TOEFL, write a good essay. Uh, tell, us, tell us about all your extracurricular activities, because frankly, most, most people applying here are good. <coughs> how, how do I choose one over the other? So if you've done research while you're an undergraduate with the faculty in your university, if you published, if you participated in conferences, if you did internships, whether at home or abroad. <coughs> All of these things come. Tell us a lot more about what you're capable of. If you're good in sports, if you're good in poetry, <coughs> whatever you feel demonstrates something extra about yourself, you should add it to your application. And uh, again, be communicative, be, you know, put your best face forward. Uh, chances are you will be considered very seriously. Also, don't be intimidated about uh, funding and financial issues. <coughs> um, the policy in this place is what we call um, uh, need blind. We don't look at whether you can afford to come here or not. We just look at your credentials, academic credentials. 
<coughs> and what you want to do with your life after you graduate. If you don't have fun, money, either family or, or fellowships, and you get admitted, the chances of you getting funded are very high. Uh, research assistant or teaching assistant uh, ships are, are available, or fellowships are available. <coughs> so again, don't uh, hesitate because you think you don't have the funding, you cannot afford it. This is not, this is not part of the selection criteria. My name is Yusuf Mohammed Mirzu, and I'm an associate professor in the Department of Aeronautics and Astronautics at MIT. My research is in the broad area of computational engineering. Uh, what we're trying to do is develop algorithms and methods that allow computers to simulate very complex physical phenomena and give us physical insight into those phenomena. Um, this could include uh, the combustion process inside of an aircraft engine. This could include the flow of the contaminant uh, in the subsurface, for instance, a contaminant that might interact with a drinking water reservoir. Um, and this also includes some very large-scale environmental problems. Um, some work that we're doing involves understanding the interaction between the ice and the ocean in Antarctica and allowing computers to predict things like ice smelting and sea level rise. So I actually did um, my undergraduate and graduate degrees at MIT. Um, all in mechanical engineering. So I have spent far too long here. I did my bachelor's, master's, and PhD in mechanical engineering. It's combustion and computational simulation, and those were really the subjects of my uh, of my master's and PhD thesis. Um, after graduating from MIT, I spent four years um, away. I spent four years at Sandia National Laboratories um, in the U.S. as part of the Department of Energy, and then I returned to the MIT faculty about four and a half years ago. My first suggestion for Egyptians applying to MIT um, is simply to do so. Um, that uh, you shouldn't feel shy or feel limited or question, you know, will you make it or not. You'll never know the answers to these questions unless you apply and you give it your very best effort. Um, so there's been many Egyptians who've come to MIT who've done fantastic work, who've really thrived here, and, and you, you, you should allow yourself the same opportunity. Um, it's, it's, it's something that, that, that you should allow yourself to do. Um, when looking at graduate applications in particular, um, I can give you some tips on what faculty actually look for um, when they decide when they read graduate applications and decide who to admit. Um, research experience is very important. Um, if you can do some research while you're an undergraduate, you know, find a professor, find a laboratory, um, do substantive research experience, not just a few months, but something over the longer term, a year or longer. Um, if that research results in a publication, um, in an international conference or journal, then that's very good. That really stands out, and that's actually something that all faculty will look for in deciding whether this student who's applying, who I've never met, whether that person could come and do research with me and in my group and contribute. Um, having pre previous research experience is very important. Um, the other thing is um, your recommendation letters are very important, so they should be written by people who know you well. But a recommendation letter that talks about your particular qualities and your excellence um, goes a long way. Of course, you don't know what you recommend. You can't, you know, read your own recommendation letters. But you should ask people if they're willing to write you a strong letter, and if they've written recommendation letters before for students who have come to the U.S. and successfully been admitted in top schools. Then that's an indicator that you know that person maybe would write you a strong letter. Um, and uh, the other thing is, is, is to communicate well. I mean, to, to, to write your application very clearly, um, to write to in, in, in a strong and convincing way, um, to talk to other Egyptians who have come to MIT or have come to other top schools, maybe have them read your application before you send it to give you tips. A final advice is when you write your application, um, think about who you might want to work with at MIT um, in the particular department to whom you're applying, um, look at the research of all the faculty who are working in that department. Um, look at their web pages. Look at their research group. See what kind of papers they write, where they publish, you know, what topics they're working on, and then try to visualize: Could I work in this group? Is this a topic of interest to me? And if it's of interest to you, then actually write that in your application, um, because then most likely that faculty member will get to read your application, and will, will then be more interested in, in, in what you have. 
my personal message to Egyptians who are thinking of coming to MIT, who might be interested in what I do, or who might be interested in coming to MIT in general, is, is to go for it. Um, to don't feel limited, um, don't feel that, oh, I can't make it, or because I'm coming from a different country, it's going to be more difficult. There have been many Egyptians, um, actually even starting with my own advisor at MIT, uh, who himself was Egyptian, um, who have come to MIT, who have done fantastically well, um, who have gone to become faculty in, in, in other universities, who have gone on to top jobs in the US, in Europe, back in Egypt. Um, it's a fantastic opportunity, and I really recommend that you apply and that you, and, and, and that you try to take advantage of it. Um, MIT is a very open place. It's a very welcoming place. It's a very diverse place. If you come here, not only will you do very interesting research working with top people, you'll meet uh, an enormous range of very interesting people, motivated people, people who really care about doing good work, who care about supporting each other. Um, MIT isn't a competitive place in the sense of people trying to beat each other. It's actually a very supportive place, I've found. And I've found this whether uh, as an undergraduate, as a graduate student, even as a faculty member. Um, it's a place where people are in it together. Um, they, 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 they care about helping each other. They, they, they are eager to cooperate. Get in touch with me or get in touch with anybody. Uh, who you think is related to, was interested in the work that you do. Uh, uh, why? Because I'm sorry to say we are the old generation. And the only thing we can do is tell you, you know, how we've done it, what, what are the interesting puzzles. But ultimately, the, the real new work is going to be done by, by the next generation. Uh, so my message is, one, if you're interested in coming to MIT, apply. Okay, don't hesitate to apply. First of all, you cannot get admitted if you don't apply. Uh, once you apply, once you put all the material uh, that we ask you to put together, uh, send it. Don't, don't be late on any of the requirements. Uh, again, put your best face forward. Uh, don't think about uh, financial or, or, or other constraints. Know that this place is um, extremely welcoming for international students and international visitors and we pride ourselves on having a big diverse group of, of students and faculty. Uh, <clears throat> know that you will uh, find an extremely exciting place in terms of the, so the intellectual energy and intellectual horsepower. There's a lot of ideas being tried out here, a lot of facilities, a lot of people. A lot of classes, a uh, lot of social activities and student groups who you will be part of and you will very much enjoy being part of. Some of them are technically focused, some of them are socially focused, <clears throat> some of them are around their own sort of ethnic groups, some, some are mixed. So you will have a great experience if you get the chance to, uh, to, to get admitted and, and, and find the right place for you to finish your work.